Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Very happy today to be joined by Brett Lauderdale. We got a lot to talk about here, Brett. There's a lot of shows coming up. There is a lot of shows coming up, all uh, all big and very exciting. Well, let's talk about uh, the Hammerstein first. Yes. I saw this video the other day. You're in it. I am in it. <laughs> I am in it. At least I wasn't the only guy that said, eh. Well, that's okay. Listen, uh, I appreciated the feedback then, and I appreciate it now, and it made for a good... Uh, uh, good intro to our video. So, uh, you know, thanks for that. Sure. So, so what? What? Um, what were your thoughts on that show? Take, I mean, we saw everybody else's thoughts. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. what did you think? Because mm-hmm. I'll just cut you off um, here very quickly. Because, like, sometimes, okay, sometimes you're doing something. In my case, it would be wrestling, mm-hmm. and there's like some mm-hmm. criticism about what you did, and like sometimes mm-hmm. you hear the criticism, you're like. Ah, it's just this person keyboard, whatever. But then sometimes it's like, yeah, it like it it sucked. I I, I thought it sucked too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always like you never know what you're gonna get with with something like that. What was your thoughts on that show? Sure, I'm glad, actually glad you asked because I don't think anybody's ever actually asked me what I thought about it. Um, and uh, the truth is, uh, I'm I'm very proud of that show. You know, um, that was a big deal for us. It was a big deal for any independent wrestling company. And I thought, you know, as far as delivering an actual quality production and, and, you know, a big time event, I thought we did a really good job. And, you know, I'll always look back and be proud of that event. Um, now, that being said, was it a, do I think it was perfect? No, of course, there's things I would change now. You know, if only we had a time machine, it, there's definitely things I would have done differently. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, you know, I don't wish it never happened. You know, um, you know, it's definitely something that I'll always be able to, um, you know, look back on and say, hey, we made history that day. And the fact that there was people that had such strong opinions on both sides uh, is actually, you know, flattering and humbling because enough people cared, you know, to to voice their opinions. And, you know, there were a lot of people that didn't enjoy it, but there was also a lot of people that really did like it and told me, you know, that was the greatest show I ever saw, the greatest show I ever attended. You know, and and people that have said for the last three years, when are you going to do it again? So, you know, I appreciate the feedback on both sides and I appreciate um, that people cared enough to comment on it, including you. Uh, You know, it's um, I don't take it personally. And if anything, it's, you know, it's motivating to give it another shot and and see if we can do better. Now, the obvious question is, if you if you watch that video, I mean, the story of the video seems to be we're going to hit it out of the park this time. (laughs) <laughs> and does that put extra pressure on you now? Um, I mean, sure, there's always pressure when you run an event of this magnitude. Um, but, you know, I like the pressure, you know. Uh, again, I feel like, um, you know, pressure motivates you. And, um, you know, I, if you want to be, you know, if you want to be a, a, a major player in this industry or, or any industry, um, you know, you need to have pressure and be able to live up to it. So, you know, I, I don't, I, you know, who knows, you know, I mean, all I can, all I can say is once again, you know, we're going to try our best. I'm going to try to do a few things differently this time. I have some ideas and, um, you know, I hope people enjoy it. You know, as far as the video goes, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, I, I, it was, I thought it was a cool concept. I thought it was a way to kind of lean into the criticisms and, you know, come up with a cool video to get people's attention. So, um, as far as you know, being creative and and whatnot, I think we're off to a good start. It was a great video, and one of the things that it focused on was the use of outsiders. And obviously, people felt a sort of way about Jeff Jarrett and Effie or Ruby Soho and, and Ali and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. But you still have to bring in people and create buzz, create interest, and you've continued to do that. How difficult is it to try to walk that line between running a business that's successful and continues to grow, but still be able to have one hand back in the street and one hand back with your outlaws and try to make both of those things, you know, kind of yin and yang together. No, of course it's a very 
tricky balance. Um, you know, when we're just doing, you know, our regular events in our regular calendar, um, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're selling five, 600 tickets in, in smaller venues, you know, and, and we're streaming, you know, regularly on our, our trailer. And there's, you know, it, it's different than when you're running an event at Hammerstein where the rent is six figures, you have over 2000 tickets to sell and you're trying to sell X amount of pay-per-views, you know, you have to go outside of your bubble. You can't use, you know, selling 500 tickets is not going to cut it. You know, um, you have to expand that base. You have to generate buzz and get people to watch your show and attend your show that wouldn't normally be there. So you need to use and, and try to figure out who those people are, uh, people that are outside of your normal your normal bubble and your normal fan base. Um, and it worked the first time, you know, the results, you know, maybe uh, from a creative standpoint, maybe it wasn't, uh, it didn't, you know, um, it, it didn't go over the way we would have hoped, but from a business standpoint, it worked 100%. It was the largest uh, paid attendance for any show in history uh, or any wrestling show in history at the Hammerstein Ballroom. The pay-per-view numbers uh, were, uh, by indie wrestling standpoints, astronomical. Uh, it, it changed GCW's. I mean, it changed. It changed GCW. Period. You know, it was life-changing uh, for me and, and for our company. So for me to, again, for me to look back and, and think of that event as a failure is absurd, you know, and to anybody who would be, you know, on the inside or privy to that information, you, again, you would say that was a astronomical success, you know, but there is a fine line, of course, you know, there, the day-to-day -day GCW fans, you know, they, they expect a certain type of show and, and I respect that. And those are the people who at the end of the day, you know, when Hammerstein's over, and we re resume our regular activities, those are the people I report to. So I, I understand, you know, where they're coming from. And I think, um, you know, people, and I, or at least I hope people can understand, you know, the other side of the coin too. You know, you kind of answered the question, but um, WWE, I've, I've, I've seen them run a few shows where they got, they got 10 times worse reviews than any show you've ever done in your life. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of them is at, I think it was a 2014 Rumble with, with Roman Reigns. And, you know, there were a lot of people really upset two years ago when Roman ended up beating Cody on that show. And, you know, you always hear when something like that happens, I am done, I will never watch this again, blah, blah, blah. But, like, in both of those examples, like, even though people claimed that and it was so horrible and they weren't watching the show anymore or whatever, like, they did big business starting the next day. So I guess, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of answered that. Like, in, in the wake of, of that show, I mean, you saw big growth coming off of it. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, I mean, if you look at what we've done since then, um, our schedule only picked up. And our schedule wouldn't pick up if people weren't, uh, if people weren't coming to the shows and they weren't watching them, you know. Uh, I'm not, I'm not in, a, in, in business to uh, lose money or do things just to do them. Uh, you know, I'm in a, I'm in this business to support my family and to grow our business. So, um, I mean, again, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, if you just look at GCW has done since then, um, I mean, the, the after, you know, the aftermath, the, the after effects are still, I mean, we're, we're still reaping the benefits today. So I guess the other question is looking, this business changes very rapidly. We're talking three years mm -hmm. ago. How has business changed for you in ways that are better and worse? I mean, obviously Vince is gone, and so a lot of his nutty hiring requirements are out the window. So, you know, they've signed a lot of guys, and AW's got like 200-odd-something people under contract right now. Yeah. And, I mean, how have things changed for the better and for the worse over the last three years in yeah. terms of having to do business? Well, like you said, you know, and in particular, wrestling business, indie wrestling business changes every day. You know, people ask me all the time, you know, for, um, you know, whatever advice, what should I do with this? So, you know, people ask me long term stuff. I'm like, the honest truth is stuff is going to change every day. So don't even ask me that, you know, just worry about what you're doing right now. But, um, you know, in the last three years, I mean, honestly, I there's been more change for what I do on a day to day basis because of AEW than because of anything with 
Vince or WWE when, when AEW came in, both for better and for worse, you know, there was dramatic changes to the wrestling business, um, it, you know, and, you know, it, it made suddenly, you know, uh, hundreds of wrestlers who were, you know, otherwise independent or unemployed were now suddenly in play and employed and getting paid well and getting what they deserve in a lot of cases. Uh, but it, it, you know, obviously created a major shift in, um, you know, the talent pool and, um, forced us, uh, again, this is a for better and worse situation, you know, forced everybody to get creative, find new talent, talent, find new ways to develop talent. Um, and, um, yeah, just, you know, it, it, everything changed, uh, as far as on the WWE side goes, um, yeah, of course, everything's different now. Suddenly WWE is open to not just acknowledging the idea that wrestling exists outside of the WWE, but working with hand in hand with companies that aren't WWE and anybody, you know, you guys, myself, anybody who's been a wrestling fan for, you know, their whole, you, know, don't, you don't even have to be a wrestling fan for your whole life, but just for, a, you know, a long time, you know, how crazy that is. Uh, and it's, you know, we've been fortunate to be on, you know, the, the side of acknowledgement, if you will, you know, the fact that they've been willing to work with us, on blood sport and lend their talent um that's something that when i started gcw i could have never imagined possible so there's been a lot of changes so you also announced the wrestlemania weekend in vegas and um like how how are things you know wwe now is like it's completely on fire it's it's a new boom period as far as like generating revenue they're bigger than they've ever been this is a big change from like 2019 but i mean wrestlemania weekend's always been successful but i mean how are you anticipating this doing is this going to be you feel a trickle down for you guys have have you know what, what do you see well we've always been fortunate the collective has always done well from from the first year we did it in 2019 um it's always been very successful for us and all our partners um you know knock on wood uh and and i hope and anticipate that it will be successful again this year. You know, it seems like as you, you know, WWE is so hot right now, you know, everything they do is selling out. People are traveling to go see them. And, and as far as destination weekends go, WrestleMania weekend, SummerSlam weekend, et cetera, the things that we're a part of, that's all good for us. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I anticipate that we'll continue to see, you know, that same trickle down and that benefit from, um, you know, if people are coming to see WWE, hopefully they'll come and see us as well. Uh, and they they always have in the past. So hopefully it stays the same. Uh, but, you know, this year's event, this year's collective is going to be taking place at the Palms Resort, uh, Casino and Resort uh, at the Pearl Theater, which is truly a beautiful property. It's a, a beautiful uh, casino, beautiful hotel. I mean, top of the line. Um, it's almost, you know, I joke about it. It's almost too nice for us. I don't even know what we're doing there, but it makes uh, it'll make for a great experience for fans uh, that uh, are coming to our events or staying at the hotel as part of our room block. Uh, we have great partners lined up who I'm looking forward to announcing. And I mean, you know, we go big every year. We go big on the collective. So this year will be no different. And hopefully it's as successful as the past years. Well, you sort of answered the question, but, you know, these people asking you about long term. Uh, we got about 10 seconds here. Do you have a plan in your head of some sort for WrestleMania weekend yet? Uh, lots of great shows all day, every day. Okay. All right. Stand by. Back in a moment. Seconds. Observer Live. Mm-hmm. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Brett Lauderdale joining us here today. We got a couple minutes here, so let's get some plugs in for what you got upcoming, as well as social media and more. Sure. Uh, our next real big mega event, November 23rd, which is a Saturday, November 23rd at the American Dream in East Rutherford. Uh, think uh, it's it's the Mall of America of the East Coast. So think, uh, you know, Monday Nitro at the Mall of America. That's going to be us on November 23rd. That's at 2 p.m. And of course, later that night, 7 p.m., right down the road in Newark is AEW. So anybody up in the East Coast, that's a good day for wrestling uh if you are uh if you're game uh aside from that um yeah hammerstein january 19th 
Uh, we have a big slate of events coming up. Uh, follow us on X, as it's called now, at GC Wrestling underscore. Follow us on Instagram at Game Changer Wrestling. Of course, check out our YouTube. And most importantly, Brian, uh, most importantly, subscribe to Triller Plus and watch all of our events and our entire back catalog for just seven ninety nine a month. The best deal in wrestling. Or forty nine a year, is that right? I think so. I think it's forty nine like a year. That. Yeah. I paid for it. It's a great so. deal. Whatever it is, it's a great deal. Yeah, there's a, there's actually too, a lot it's of, actually too good of a deal. Yeah, there's there's a lot of great stuff up there, everybody. So check it out, Triller TV Plus. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.